GPS was developed by the United States Department of Defense. It is the technology of determining our position from the positions of a constellation of navigation satellites. The complete GPS system is made up of the satellites in space, the control centers, and the user's GPS receivers. Satellites, or space vehicles, orbit the Earth at altitudes of about 11,000 miles. The orbits, and therefore the locations of the satellites, are calculated in advance. Each GPS satellite continually beams this almanac information back to the Earth in the form of radio waves. Your GPS receiver will automatically collect this information and store the almanac file for future reference. The Department of Defense constantly monitors the orbits of the satellites to look for deviations from the predicted values. Such deviations are known as ephemeris errors. When ephemeris errors are detected for a satellite, the errors are sent back up to that satellite, which in turn broadcasts the errors to the GPS receivers. Given the almanac information as well as the ephemeris errors, the GPS receivers can determine the positions of the visible GPS satellites at any given time. In order to compute its position, your GPS receiver needs to know the answer to these two questions. A. What are the precise locations of three or more visible GPS satellites? And B. What are the distances from your GPS receiver to these GPS satellites? By tracking the satellites, your GPS receiver obtains almanac and ephemeris information that reveal the whereabouts of the satellites. Knowing the positions of the satellites, the GPS receiver can determine its own location by computing its distance to each of the visible satellites. To determine its three-dimensional position, the GPS receiver must track at least four satellites. This is because the clocks in GPS receivers are not as accurate as the atomic clocks in the satellites. The discrepancy between the GPS receiver time and satellite time is the fourth variable that must be solved for in addition to the X, Y, Z position variables. GPS determines the distance between a GPS satellite and a GPS receiver by measuring the amount of time it takes the GPS signal to travel from the satellite to the receiver. This is called satellite ranging. Radio waves travel at the speed of light, which is about 186,000 miles per second. So, if you know the amount of time it takes for the signal to travel from the satellite to the receiver, you can easily calculate the distance between the two. Distance equals speed multiplied by time. So, how does the GPS receiver know how long it takes a radio signal to get to it from a satellite? It will need to know the exact time the signal was transmitted by the satellite and the exact time when it receives the signal. In order to do this, the satellites and the receivers use very accurate clocks that are synchronized so that they can generate the same signal waveform code at exactly the same time. The code received from the satellite can be compared with the code generated by the receiver. By comparing the codes, the time difference between when the satellite generated the code, and when the receiver generated the code, can be determined. This interval is the travel time of the code. Multiplying this travel time in seconds by 186,000 miles per second gives the distance from the receiver position to the satellite in miles. The distances from the receiver to the satellites are used in calculating the receiver position. 
the GPS receiver will display the calculated position. It will generally not show the distances to the satellites because those values are not of direct interest to us. One way of determining signal travel time for distance computation is by examining the time delay between the signal waveform or code transmitted by the satellite and the same code generated by the GPS receiver. This method is commonly used in the civilian sector and is referred to as course acquisition code or CA code method. As the distance is derived but not directly measured, it is referred to as pseudo range. Another method compares the carrier wave transmitted by the satellite and the carrier wave generated by the receiver to determine the time difference. The time difference is measured in terms of a number of whole carrier waves plus a phase difference. Since the carrier wave has a much shorter wavelength than the CA code waveform, the carrier phase method offers much higher precision than the CA code method. We are talking about using a measuring stick about 2 meters long as compared to one about 300 meters long. A 2% measurement error in 2 meters is 4 centimeters, and a 2% measurement error in 300 meters is 6 meters. This gives you an idea of the relative accuracies to expect from using the carrier phase method or the CA code method for GPS data collection. The dual frequency method employs two carrier waves, L1 and L2. By comparing the L1 and L2 signals, most of the errors due to atmospheric effects can be removed. Corresponding to the different methods of GPS positioning, there are different types of GPS receivers that offer different levels of accuracy. Of course, you will want to use the most cost-effective GPS system that is within your budget and also meets the requirements of your application. CA code receivers typically provide 1 to 5 meter GPS position accuracy with differential correction. CA code GPS receivers provide a sufficient degree of accuracy to make them useful in most geographic information system applications or GIS applications. CA code receivers can provide 1 to 5 meter GPS position accuracy with an occupation time of 1 second. Longer occupation times, up to 3 minutes, will provide GPS position accuracies consistently within 1 to 3 meters. Recent advances in GPS receiver design now allow a CA code receiver to provide sub-meter accuracy down to 30 centimeters. Carrier phase receivers typically provide 10 to 30 centimeter GPS position accuracy with differential correction. Carrier phase receivers provide the higher level of accuracy demanded by certain GPS applications. A long occupation time is required to attain the 10 to 30 centimeter accuracy. Initializing a carrier phase GPS job on a known point requires an occupation time of about 5 minutes. Initializing a carrier phase GPS job on an unknown point requires an occupation time of about 30 to 40 minutes. In addition, using the carrier phase method requires you to maintain the same satellite constellation throughout the job and be fairly close to a base station. These requirements make carrier phase receivers impractical for many GPS applications. Dual frequency receivers receive signals from the satellites on two frequencies simultaneously. They are capable of providing sub-centimeter GPS position accuracy with differential correction. Dual frequency receivers provide survey grade accuracies not often required for GIS applications. For this training, our focus will be on the CA code receivers. 
As the satellites orbit about the Earth, the constellation visible to you changes with time. When the satellites are spread out in all directions, they yield a more precise position solution than when they are all lined up in one direction. This effect is independent of the GPS receiver or measurement method you use. It is called dilution of precision or DOP. DOP is an indicator of the quality of the geometry of the satellite constellation. A high DOP value indicates poor satellite geometry and an inferior measurement configuration. Some GPS receivers can analyze the positions of the satellites available based upon the almanac and choose those satellites with the best geometry in order to make the DOP as low as possible.